Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 26th, 2023. Well, yesterday we had kind of a mix going on. We had a little bit of bearishness. We had a little bit of bullishness, um, particularly in the tech sector, which, um, and in fact, just the giant techs really had a great day yesterday. Everything else, not so much. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Today is a no blog Friday and decided not to write a blog. I had a question yesterday on the YouTube channel and I apologize I just didn't get a chance to um, respond to all of those so I thought I would do it in the video form this morning. So as we move along I'm going to address um, a question um, here on the day. But let's take a look at these index charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. First off, the diamonds has suffered the biggest, uh, the, the most of the technical damage here in the chart. If you'll notice here, we've got a lower high followed by a lower low. And this lower low did finally break us out of this range that we've been stuck in since April. Uh, chopping back and forth in this range so we broke down and unfortunately we also broke down below our 50-day moving average and yesterday uh, closed just slightly below our 200-day moving average although we did recover pretty substantially by the end of the day so technically on the patterns here what we'd be looking for is that rally back right now a little bit of relief to the upside to see if we can break back into those areas of the chart now this uh, downtrend break line i've kept it green and i will keep it green until we show some kind of a failure here if we were to rally into here and then show failure then that's going to turn red as well in the chart. So keep an eye on that. If we can recover, if we can get right back up here into that range and hold, then, um, well, unfortunately, we'll just be right back in the chop zone. So today, if we're looking at this chart, if the bulls find inspiration today, where are we going to go? Well, I think the obvious place would be right back up in here to test the, um, this resistance that I've got right here in the chart. Runs across here quite a ways. And if we can break through that, maybe we push up here a little bit higher and you can see we can test these levels in price resistance in the chart and um, possibly um, break through that little downtrend break here. So watch that carefully if the bulls find inspiration today. If the bears find inspiration today, well, where are we going to go? And I had suggested yesterday that if we broke down through this support, that there was a pretty good chance we come down in here. That's exactly what ended up happening. We came down in there, bounced off of that support, rallied at the end of the day. So if those bears uh, uh, find inspiration, I'm gonna suggest we would come back down and maybe test that level. And unfortunately, if that level were to break, well, it's a pretty far drop really to some next levels of price support here in the chart, um, maybe down in this area in the diamond. So let's um, kind of, well, let's hope some of the data is better than that. If we take a look at our uh, SPY, SPY, no technical damage here in the chart at all. As a matter of fact, I told you guys that I would be changing this to red in only if we get a failure in that chart. So far, there's no sign of that. We continue to push up because of the tech giants. And virtually only the tech giants are making uh, that move. As a matter of fact, I think there is a chance that we could be running into a little bit of a 
a, a bit a tech giant or an AI bubble um, kind of coming, uh, it, not necessarily ready to fire off yet, but l we may be getting a little bit over over um, zealous here when it comes to buying up AI right now. So take a look at this as we push on through. If those bulls find inspiration, I'm going to suggest that we come back up here and ret retest this resistance level in the chart. And if we can pop through there, then we're back up here testing this recent high in um, the SPY. If the bears do find inspiration and we fail in this area here and we pull back, well, then I would be looking for another retest of support down in here and continuing to stay stuck in the same range that we have been stuck in since April. So watch that closely. If we um, take a look at our moving averages in here, technically, like I said, there's no technical damage here in the chart. You can see that 50-day moving average is finally moving up pretty sharply to, to, to help provide some support. So pull back into here, I would look for that support level um, to hold initially. So watch that close. Then let's take a look at our QQQ. QQQ based on the big tech move yesterday in NVIDIA and everything else that just rallied straight up that had anything to do with AI. We pushed up here um, really, really strong, a full breakout there, no technical damage in the chart. Um, this is a massive gap um, in the QQQ. So showing strength here yet this morning, trying to push on through, and there's no reason here to believe that they're not going to continue to push that um, at the moment. No signs here of any kind of failure. Um, the bulls are definitely in control. So if the bulls continue to to stay inspired here in the chart. Where are we going to go? Well, there is a fairly big resistance level here in the chart. Somewhere in this area, as you can see, we're gonna run into some big old data points in here where we could find some significant resistance. So that's up there away. So if those bulls can really get going, uh, maybe we can push into that level. If those bears find inspiration here today, well, I'm going to suggest about the best they could probably expect to do would be push back down and test this support level in the chart. If that were to break, then we're back down here testing this prior low. So keep an eye on that. Our IWM, IWM pushed back down and we touched our 50 day moving average yesterday uh, uh, excuse me the day before yesterday yesterday we broke through and closed below that 50 day moving average but we did bounce very near this price support here in the chart so pushing back up there is a little bit of technical damage here and as you can see we've got a bit of a moving average squeeze our shorter term moving averages are all bundled up right there to provide some additional resistance in that chart. It all depends on how the market responds today, whether or not we'll be able to break back through that. So looking at the price action here in the chart, we also have a price resistance level right about there. So um, as we push back up, if those bulls find inspiration, let's see if they can push on through there holding on to that little upside trend to see if they can break on through that level. If they can, well, we're right back up here trying to push up and maybe test this resistance up here once again. If the bears were to find inspiration and we continue to press to the downside, I would look for this little upside trend to, to break in that circumstance. Maybe we push down into here again, and if that fails, then we come right back down into this area of the chart. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX um, continued to stay stuck um, here in uh, the chart. A little bit of relief yesterday at the end of the day, pulling that fear back, staying below that uh, 20 handle here in the chart. As I suggested, this big resistance area in here, if those bears are really gonna get inspired, we're gonna have to get through that and, and hold up here. But right now the bulls remain in control just simply because of just a handful of tech giants. And uh, we'll be watching that closely because if they do start to sell and the bears take control, we could move pretty quickly. If the bulls main 
maintain this um, uh, pressure into the end of the week um, on the tech sector, then I would look for that pullback into this area of support. And if they break through there, well, then we're moving on down into that area of support. We also want to keep in mind that this everything could change really quickly based on what happens in Washington, D.C., whether or not there's a deal announced, no deal announced. Uh, those kind of things. That's really weighing heavy on the market right now. So uh, watch that close. Let's take a look at um, our T2122. T2122 might be one of our best hopes of a relief rally here. As you can see, we push down here into that bearish reversal zone of T2122. Now remember, this is just a four week new high, new low rate ratio. How many stocks are making new highs? How many stocks are making new lows? And you put that ratio together and it gives us those clues whether or not we're overbought or oversold. And looking here in the chart, as you can see, we're holding down, uh, bounce down here in the bottom. So a relief rally in here could certainly ensue. And that means uh, if the bulls are really inspired we have plenty of upside opportunity here to go to the upside but unfortunately it also shows us that we still have room to the downside if the bears were to come into some kind of inspiration today so watch that closely if we take a look at our uh, t2108 darn it T2108, you can see yesterday we pulled back pretty substantially, but honestly, not much change here. We've been, since April, we've been kind of languishing here and pretty low uh, momentum of the market, lots and lots of chop. And you can see we continue to wind around in this wedging pattern. It is tightening up. So maybe we get that big move here eventually and we continue to remain underneath some price resistance and we remain just above some support levels in that chart. So we've been pretty stuck here in the market. Our uh, T2107, basically the same. We had a little bit of bearishness coming in there yesterday, pushing us down to the lower side of that range, but we really haven't changed much of anything since um, since April, when we got into this range bound chop, we're stuck between resistance and support. Still have this rather ominous looking head and shoulders pattern out here and that possibility that that could engage eventually. But let's keep a keep our eyes out here for a potential relief rally today um, to kind of finish up the week. And then we'll see um, if we can follow on through depending on um, a debt ceiling deal or not. Then let's take a look at our T2101. If there's some good news here in T2101 because of the bearishness, it would be we actually saw a little bit bigger shot of momentum in the move. We followed through for uh, a period of time here. Uh, breaking, uh, breaking through up here, you can see uh, just finally getting through this choppy zone that we have been in. Now if we can um, uh, get something uh, going that continues that follow through, maybe we can pick up a little bit, of mo bit more momentum in the market. Um, one thing interesting yesterday is if we are going to be bullish today, and I, I think there's a chance we will be until we get these data numbers, we'll see if they're good enough to continue to push us up. But uh, we didn't even hook here yesterday, showing that those bears were still pretty much in control, despite the fact that um, big tech uh, uh, just continues to press and press and press to the upside. So watch carefully here. Um, if we do hook um, um, here today, that would be a good sign of reversal back to the upside uh, market, at least for a short period of time. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today and our economic calendar has a few things that we want to be paying attention to this morning uh, some big data points that definitely have the potential to move our market substantially okay my computer glitched there so hopefully um, you won't notice any major problems here um, on our economic calendar here this morning, we've got some uh, some data points that definitely could move us substantially here in the market. Taking a look here, we've got a durable goods order 
um, obviously that is a potential market mover and the durable goods are looking uh, for a number right now in the consensus to come in flat from last month. I think there is a chance that we could miss on that number. So um, watch that close. Our um, international trading goods, um, that's something we love to ignore. And we continue to ignore that uh, month over month, even though we're looking for um, uh, the trade deficit to widen this week. And then last but not least here today of the really big reports, we're going to get personal incomes and outlays. And we know that is one of the Fed's favorite numbers. And unfortunately, the consensus is not showing us a whole lot of hope, showing that maybe that the month over month numbers are actually have actually increased and that the year over year core PCE stays flat at 4.6. So I don't know how those numbers will come out, but the consensus is not giving us a whole lot of warm and fuzzy on that. And that could definitely, if we um, see inflation uh, ticking back higher, that definitely could bring those bears out hard. So watch carefully if that were to occur. Um, then we've got um, retail advanced uh, and wholesale uh, inventories. We've got consumer sentiment here and then Baker Hughes rig count. And also keep in mind, guys, that we have a um, situation here in the market where um, all of the airlines are talking about record trade or record travel for this holiday season. So today's a getaway day. We could also see after the initial reaction in the market, very light, choppy um, volume because so many people are out traveling for the holiday. So kind of keep that as, as an idea. And remember, this is sliding into that three-day weekend. So make sure you consider carefully your positions as we move into that longer term weekend. On the earning side of things, there really isn't much um, out there um, on the earning side of things. We have some retail here this morning to be paying attention to on our earnings calendar. Now, although there are a few other earnings out there, there really isn't much um, in here to be majorly concerned about um, as far as moving the market. Um, HIBB um, is going to be reporting, seeing a little bit of bearishness um, in that chart. We've got uh, BKE, the buckle, that's also showing a little bit of bearishness here this morning. And uh, Big Lot um, also showing a little bit of bearishness this morning. And uh, that's probably not a major surprise just simply because um, consumers are starting to show that slowing, that weakening here in the market. Let's take a look um, at some charts setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up, so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you can please do me that favor, and that would be click that subscribe button. I mean, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does do that. <laughs> I want to apologize that I didn't get a chance to answer those questions yesterday, but I'll be back on task here this morning and answer those comments. So before I start talking about a few stocks that um, are setting up, I want to address a question that came out um, in the video yesterday. I made the, the mention that bond yields have a tendency to push up the cost of the dollar. And the question was, can you show me something? Why is that um, occurring? Well, if we look here this morning, we continue to see um, US dollar surging um, to the upside, staying very, very strong here on the US dollar. Now, when you think about dollar, dollar is priced just like everything else. There has to be some way to measure its value, what it's worth. One of the ways we do that, it's not every way we do that, but one of the ways we do that is we take a look at bond yields. Now, bond yields uh, continue to be um, one of those 
one of those ways that we value money. So uh, this morning, for example, our three-month bonds are at 5.28%. Our six-month bonds are at 5.40%. So as that short-term cost of buying money or securing money goes up, the value of the dollar also goes up. Now, certainly there are currency fluctuations um, in other countries that also affect the strength of the dollar. We value the dollar against other currencies as well. How does it perform against the Japanese yen? How does it perform against the Chinese yuan? How does it uh, um, perform against the euro? Also has a major factor in doing that. But when um, other countries um, need access to dollars, they usually go through the treasury market to do that. And when treasury values are going higher and higher and higher, value a dollar goes higher. So I wanted to explain that. Now, value a dollar also has major impacts on particularly commodity prices. When you kind of think about this, um, it makes some sense. If we go out and, and we buy a barrel of oil here, and um, the, the price of uh, um, the cost of a dollar is going higher, it takes fewer dollars to buy that same barrel of oil. If the value of the dollar is going down, it takes more of those dollars to buy that same barrel of oil. Now the same thing is true if you look at gold, if you look at food commodities, uh, um, sugar, cotton, all of those kind of things, strength of the dollar affects those prices as well. So there is a major impact here on what the dollar is doing and how the market performs around that. So something to be paying attention to in the market. And I hope that answers that question. So let's take a look at a few of these charts um, that could be setting up. And remember guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful here in the market. Try not to over trade, uh, particularly heading into a three day weekend, considering the risks that could be out there. Follow your those uh, your rules, your risk tolerances. So first off, let's take a look at a few things in that oil sector that have been interesting because I just mentioned the fact that as uh, the dollar goes up, we typically see oil going down. Well, that sh big shot of um, energy um, in the US dollar here yesterday did have a bit of a negative impact on oil. And we started to see um, some of those stocks um, pull back pretty hard yesterday. Now, they've been trying to break down trends and push back to the upside and, and hold a support level in these charts. So I do think they're continuing to be worth watching. Um, as you guys know, I, I was taking, uh, last week I talked about VLO, I talked about it yesterday. VLO could be setting up a little refiner in here, uh, trying to move, and I mentioned rig yesterday as well being a potential. So we're starting to see some of those bullish signs come back here in those prices. If that dollar were to weaken, that should help these pretty substantially. If the dollar continues to strengthen, this could falter and, and cause a little bit of a problem. When we look at UNG, UNG natural gas, we also, also saw a pretty big hit to natural gas yesterday because of the strength of the dollar. And as that dollar strengthens, it just takes fewer dollars to buy natural gas and pulled it back. So as that dollar strengthens, it's going to have some ramifications for these commodity type based products. Now, although I'm still holding this and I do have uh, you know, a bias on this because I am holding it, but I do think we're starting to bottom this out in here. And I don't think we're gonna be in a world here in, in, a, in the short term anyway, that's gonna be um, uh, not needing natural gas. So um, I, I'm holding this looking for a longer term position and it just an, uh, an entry into that to um, keep a close eye on it. So watch that close. Um, take a look at DKNG. You know, one of the things that we're seeing in the market right now is we kind of don't like any of the big brick and mortar um, 
casinos out there, uh, Wind Casino, LVS, all of those are looking pretty bearish right now. But we still really are in love with online gambling here. So DraftKings, look at this. Nice little resting pattern in here, pulling back to support. I'd be looking for that next opportunity to the upside here in DraftKings. Um, keeping an eye on um, other stocks out there that are pretty darn um, interesting um, in the market right now. Whoops, sorry. Didn't mean to pull that. Uh, well, doggone it that out of the way there we go um, other places that you might want to look uh, take a look at some of the uh, banks if we take a look at um, XLF XLF has kind of broken itself down here a bit we're continuing to follow this downtrend we still have resistance above in that chart and I would be watching that closely here we're underneath that 50-day moving average if this kind of rests out here or even rallies back up, I'm going to be looking for that next opportunity to the downside here in XLF. And one of the reasons that might be the case is just this growing situation of commercial real estate defaults because folks aren't going back to work or, or back to the office. We have a lot of empty spaces and that's putting a lot of pressure on those folks out there another place that you might want to be looking is in that tech sector uh, honestly i'm a little bit on the surprise side that we saw this yesterday um, because i don't know how oracle fits into the whole um, ai um, section maybe they do but huge rally in Oracle, just really reversing completely here on that move. So keep an eye on this. Any rest or pullback in here would set up an opportunity in Oracle. Just a huge upside move there to be paying attention to. Uh, take a look at CCJ. Here's another thing that kind of flies in the face of what I just said about commodity prices. But we've been seeing quite a little bit of um, interest in the uranium um, area. There's uh, China, um, uh, the the um, Europe is recon, uh, considering their um, uranium um, plants to bring power back to their countries, and um, we're starting to see this uh, area of the market stiffen up here. So I keep an eye on uranium breaking through um, some support in here, a little rest or pullback, I would look for that next opportunity to the upside. You could also look at like UUUU, trying to hold support in here. I've been keeping an eye on that. A Little bit of a wedge here forming up, but if that holds that support and we start seeing some buyers come in, might be of interest. Um, um, URA might also be something to be paying attention to pulling back to that trend, if that can hold support. This one's a little bit of a concern because of that double top high, but let's see if we can get this pushing back up. There may be some opportunities there in the chart. Um, take a look at, um, um, well, there's just lots of tech out there. Um, Apple, I think, continues to set up here in that chart, holding in that consolidation area may soon take off to the upside i would keep an eye on that uh, meta meta continues to just rip to the upside no stopping there at least at this point now some of these valuations are getting way out of control i think um, uh, um, someone reported in the right way options room yesterday that the pe ratio for uh, nvidia was like 163 so uh, meaning that you have to put $163 per share in or $163 in for $1 in return um, on that investment, which is incredibly, um, incredibly high. Maybe it deserves it. I don't know, but I would be a little bit careful and watch that closely. Um, take a look at stocks like Visa. Visa making a recent break to the downside, uh, feeling a little bit of pressure here. You can see we're rejecting this high up here. Push down hard, rally back. I would be looking for the next potential short in that area. Um, as we continue to see the consumers weaken here. So I'm going to cut this video off today. I apologize. I've been kind of stammering around here a little bit more than normal. Um, 
But I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful three-day weekend. Be careful. Be safe out there today. Could be a lot of volatility in the morning, and then it might just get really boring this afternoon. So be kind of careful. Wish you all the best, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great weekend.